Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I have a flip through video for you guys. It's been a while since I've done a flip through, and it's been a while since I have completed an entire devotional kit from By the Well for God. Now, kind of completed. I'll explain what happened here. But um, if you want to know a full list of products that I used through this month as I worked through this release, check out my what is in my cart video. I will link that down below. That actually came in very handy. I don't just do that to have video content. Um, while I was putting together this project, the cooler in my office burnt up and broke. And so I couldn't work in my office. I had to transition things into my living room. And I was able to just bring my cart full of things and move to another part of the house. Super easy. I had everything in one place. So it was very easy to grab things and work through this project. And so um, in the earlier videos, as I show you the unboxing um, of this kit, which I'll link down below, I decided to work in a traveler's notebook sized album from Freckled Fawn versus journaling directly in my Bible. And that was for a couple different reasons. I wanted to kind of play around with this idea as inspiration for those of you who are not comfortable um, journaling in your journaling Bibles, but it also gave me a way to have plenty of room to journal through this particular uh, topic. This devotional was so, so good and I'm still working through it. Uh, and so I wanted plenty plenty of space and I was amazed. I have pretty much everything from the release and I used a ton of stuff in this project and I still have a ton of stuff left over. So if you're curious about the kits and the releases from By the Well for God, they are certainly worth the price. Uh, I, ha I could probably do a whole set of Bible journaling entries plus another little mini book. I mean, I just got I've got tons of stuff. So uh, again, like I mentioned, I'm working in a traveler's notebook sized album from Freckled Fawn. So these do come um, or you can purchase little plastic sleeve inserts, um, but I didn't use those. And I actually cut my pages a little bit wider um, than traveler's notebook size. So my pages are, I believe, eight by five. Yeah, eight inches tall by five inches wide are the pages that I did in here. Um, and I started sharing on my Instagram account. But one thing I discovered as I was sharing, um, I was kind of doing the pages and doing my journaling and note taking and things like that. And I found myself hesitant to really go in depth journaling, prayer journaling, because I knew I was sharing it publicly. And so I knew I was also going to do a flip through. And so I found myself, you know, not really going in depth because there were some personal things that I didn't want out on the internet. And so what I decided to do after the first few days, um, you can see I did cover up a little bit of journaling. I decided to just go through and complete the album so I could show you guys that part of it. And then I'll come back in and add all my prayer journaling, note taking, that kind of thing off camera. So just keep that in mind. Um, as we go forward, but this does give you kind of an idea. So uh, here is my cover page. Now, again, most everything will be linked in that what's in my cart video. I do have some other things that weren't in that video that I will link in this video. Um, and then I'll just put the subject to change category over at By the Well for God linked down below for you guys so you can shop all of the products from the release. But I did bring in some other things from my stash. So I did this cover page. I used a lot of papers from the release. Um, if you watch that uh, What's in My Cart video, I did pull some Felicity Jane video, uh, papers. I ended up not using those. And I had some questions about, you know, I want to see what all you used after you do the cart video, what you don't use. Um, and I just want to preface saying that I don't intend on using everything that I put in in my cart when I do that video for you guys. There's a lot of things that I put in there as inspiration for you guys. So let's say you weren't going to order the paper pack from By the Well for God. You may have those Felicity Jane papers. You may have some things from your stash. Maybe you weren't going to order the stamps from By the Well for God, but you had the stamps that I had mentioned in my cart. So it wasn't so much, okay, I need all of these things. It was just to give you guys some inspiration to shop your stash. Um, and then I, you, I used a big chunk of what I had in there, but not everything. So I used one of the papers. I did use the stencil. I've got a few things to kind of show you guys. Um, the one of the stencils from the release, this lemon stencil, I just put some uh, plain texture paste through that. Um, this was the Tim Holtz um, flower dyes. I can't remember what are they brush stroke brush stroke flowers and I just used the leaves ink them up created my title page. I used a lot of the fabric this month. You'll get to see some really fun ways that I use the fabric. I don't always end up using those fabric packs. Um, and so this is a, kind of a fun way to add fabric detail because I do get questions about how to incorporate fabric 
into your projects. Keep in mind that yes, I did do this in this album, but you could take any of the layouts that I did in here and interpret them into your Bible, whether that's in a standard two inch margin or an interleaved Bible, you could um, stick that in there. I got the dog barking, we're just gonna power through. Okay, so most of these are two, actually all of them are two page spreads. And I kind of had a little bit of a formula. Again, I cut my pages down to eight inches tall by five inches wide. And I filled this just with plain white cardstock, but I did insert some other pages as I went. So using lots of stamps from, uh, the subject to change release, uh, using the flashcards and turning them into tabs and bookmarks. And, and this is like kind of a banner shape here. I used the roof uh, number set from By the Wolf for God to create some numbers. I did number each page. Um, I used a combination of the roof uh, numbers and then these Carrie Bradford numbers. I don't think that these are available any longer. If I can find something kind of equivalent, I'll link it down below for you guys, but you can see the scale is very different. Um, working in this larger format, I wanted these large um, numbers. And these are a great way to use those pattern papers. So stamping on the pattern paper, fussy cutting, fussy cutting out your number and kind of creating your own little, you know, sticker or die cut piece. This ampersand is from an old stamp set from By the Wolf for God. I think it's just titled and. Um, so I will try to find that and link that down below using the new alpha from this release. These are um, embossed with clear embossing to add some texture. Did a little bit of prayer journaling. And then I took the verse cards. Now this was a separate um, item that you could purchase as a set of beautiful cards that kind of are their standalone pro uh, project, but there are verses from the devotional content. So I would each day go through, see if there were any cards that coordinated with that day. And then I inserted these and used them as a place to do some word studies. So as I go through this, you'll see a lot of them are blank because I'll come back and do those word studies, but um, using, you know, running a, plain card through my typewriter. These are just some journaling cards from scrapbook.com. I'll link these down below. I did cut them down, but they're just journaling lines on both sides. You could use plain cardstock. Just did a simple word study, definitely not an in-depth study, uh, using the label stickers to do the Strong's Concordance number. And so this just made kind of a fun little insert piece that you could even come back in and add those at a later time. That's kind of the nice thing about working in something like this is you can continuously add things in here. Uh, doilies, this card here is actually one of those recipe journaling cards. And I just flipped it to the back and used that as a journaling spot. Uh, to type out the verse. And here you can see where I used the other flashcard for the day and just cut it into a tab. So um, prior to starting the project, I did go through and highlight all of the verses. And then for each day, I would just paper clip in the cards that coordinated with that day. So sometimes there were journaling cards, sometimes flashcards, I would paper clip them. And then that way, when I came to that day, I just automatically had those there and knew what I wanted to try to incorporate into the layout. So this is probably gonna be a long video. I do wanna kind of show all the details for you guys. Another two page spread you can see for this one, I did go ahead and cut down one of the papers. Um, so if there was a day that I had maybe less journaling that I wanted to do or you know something like that, I would do just kind of more of an artistic page holder on one side and then some room to journal on the other side. Here again, using those Ruth numbers. Um, these are white heat embossed. Um, and then I just fussy cut them out of the paper. I do try to have something on both sides that tie it together. So I don't know if you'll be able to see in the background, but I actually took um, one of the stamps. I can't remember the name of it. It's one with all the flowers and lemons and lightly stamped it kind of to mimic this paper using the alpha stickers. There is a cute little uh, B die cut underneath here. Um, again, one of those verse cards and I did add a little bit of detail using a Tim Holtz die. This is the crochet die. I love this die. I do have a little bit of trouble running this through my um, Spellbinders machine with the magic mat. I found with the magic mat, uh, sometimes you need to add some extra pieces of the cardstock in there to kind of shim it up. I may be due to replace mine. Um, so there were some little pieces that didn't pop out, but I didn't worry about that. And so I would just cut that down. And then any pieces that I had left over, I would just leave in my cart because then I could use those scraps as I went along um, this project. So I kind of use that as a tab. Again, on the back did a word study. 
using labels, again, those flashcards to create uh, tabs. This is one of the uh, tea bags from that little tea bag add on. There was a tea bag in the set of die cuts that comes with the kit. So I do want to say that if you just buy the devotional kit, there is plenty of product just in the kit. You could even do a project like this just with the die cuts and the stamp that's in the kit. Um, and stickers and things like that. So don't feel like you have to, add, you know, buy everything in the release, though I used quite a bit. Um, this little stamp here was the freebie um, that you got in your little freebie pack if you order, you had a large enough order. Um, and then that I just um, embossed with some embossing glaze and then just used some markers. Um, that ended up being the only gold that I have in the entire album. I know that I had that um, foundry wax set aside. I thought I was going to use it in this project, but I ended up not using um, very much gold. Uh, this is one of the uh, journaling cards that comes in the kit, and it does have some journaling room on the back, but I just used it as a focal piece there. Moving along, this little scrap is kind of where I started for this layout. And so I had mentioned there was this Doris uh, lemon or citrus embossing folder. So I just embossed some plain white cardstock. I'm hoping you'll be able to see that texture, uh, kind of tore it. And then again, just starting to layer up uh, verse cards, the uh, flash cards, some die cuts. And then these little scrappy pieces are using that um, 49 in Market uh, Curator's Meadow Washi Tape. I showed this in my What's in My Cart video. It's this really wide four inch um, amazing washi. It is just like this amazing collage pattern on it. it. Makes it very easy to do some instant backgrounds. So in that video I shared, I had collage paper, I had some stamp, like collage background stamps. So you could use any of those to create a similar look, um, but the washi tape made it really easy. And so I just kind of tore it and added it in the background. And then any leftover I had, I actually just kind of kept stuck to the edge of my table. And so as I worked through this project, I could just use those scraps because it's just a collage pattern. There's no like edge to it. So it's very easy to just add bits and pieces. Again, using some of those verse uh, cards in here. Now there were two uh, of the verses for this day. Some of the days had three or four cards. And so I only picked, you know, a couple kind of looking at the design and how the design worked with my page, but also the verses. Um, and then I left some of them out. And so I may go ahead and do a separate project with the leftover cards because there are still quite a few leftover cards. Um, just some washi tape folded over as tabs. Uh, I've got a little journaling spot in here if I want to come back and do some more journaling. Again, another verse study. And so the blank cards, again, that will be a consistency. I'll come back in and do a verse study on the blank cards throughout here. Uh, this piece, again, was one of those uh, recipe cards. I ended up only using one of the recipe cards in this album. Uh, I used the back side of it more as a journaling spot. I did cut it with my deckle trimmer. Uh, again, layering some of that washi tape. This is a Carrie Bradford stamp. It's the coordinating stamp that goes with this. That is a solid fill uh, number stamp. We'll have those big, large numbers. I'm going to talk to By the Well for God, see, not the same font, but see if we can do something similar in a big size. If that's something you guys are interested in, leave a comment down below if that's a stamp set you would like to have, because I love having these big, bold uh, numbers. And they have some big numbers, but they're not quite this big um, from By the Well for God. So this is just embossed with some embossing glaze. Um, I didn't, you know what, I actually kind of forgot about the clear stickers as I went in. So this may be the only place those clear stickers show up. I'll have to insert them as I go back in um, and do my journaling. Um, this is from the stamp set that comes with the devotional kit, the little My Dreams with the asterisk uh, subject to change. Uh, this one, again, just using some texture paste with the stencil. And I mixed in some gelatos with this. So I, if you've been watching me for a while, you know, I have a love-hate relationship with gelatos. They are not my favorite. I have just about every color because um, they didn't have distress crayons out yet. Um, and so I was using these. I found that I kind of prefer distress crayons. They're not as waxy to write over. Now they are not a direct comparison. They do behave slightly differently. Um, but one way I like using gelatos is using them to tint 
um, product because there's no liquid in them. They're just straight pigment. You get a nice intense color when you mix it with that white paste. You just use like a palette knife or a regular knife and just like hack off a chunk of the gelato and then mix it in with your paste. And then you can get colored paste. And so I just used, um, I think margarita mix and maybe buttercream, mix those together to get this, um, kind of bright yellow. And then I had some left over after I did the stenciling. So I immediately, before I cleaned up, I just swiped it through another stencil on another piece of white paper and then just left it aside. Um, that way I could insert it later on as I went through my project. So don't feel like you have to throw away any of your extra. You can even save them in little containers. If you have any of the little, um, like little pots uh, for the, let me grab them right here, for the, these, these little Felicity Jane um, pots that they put their, uh, they put their confetti in here and their paper clips. You could use these to store your leftover texture paste. They're not airtight, so it won't last forever, um, but that's a great way to kind of save it and not waste it if you're worried about wasting supplies. I'm trying to use up my gelatos, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about wasting it. But um, what I did was I just laid the stencil and then kind of masked it off with some tape put that texture paste through. And then this is a repeating stencil. So I was able to line it up over the bottom um, and continue that pattern on the edge. I really love how that um, turned out. Using some die cuts from the release. Again, one of those flashcards is kind of a little banner. Um, this is the Ruth numbers on some pattern paper. And then these are Paper Rose uh, gum leaf, I think they're gum leaves gum leaf dies. Uh, and I just sprayed some cardstock with some distress sprays and then die cut those out and kind of added those as an embellishment. I'll probably come back and add a tab to this card. This is an example of a blank. So I'll come back in here, do all my journaling, prayer journaling, note taking, word study um, in here. Uh, now that it's all put together. Uh, so another kind of great idea for you guys, maybe spend the first couple days of the month setting something like this up. Uh, and then that way you can spend the rest of the month really in depth focused on your study. And that way you're not so focused on the art part, get it out of the way. And then you can focus on the study part. Uh, this one here had three verse cards that kind of paired with the day for five. Um, so I'll probably add tabs to these. I may do journaling on all of them. I may not. There definitely will be a card that is a word study, um, probably on faithfulness. And maybe I'll pull out some other words from the verses that I have here. I love doing word studies. Again, you're going to see some of that um, collage tape. And here's an example. I had some scrap pieces on my table and I just kind of layered. There's two additional pieces on here and you can see they just blend right in um, with that background. Again, that Ruth number. I'm not sure if that Ruth number is still available. If it is, I will link it down below for you guys uh, using the different um, alphabet stickers. This page is actually the pattern paper that looks like this in the pack. And it was a little plain for me to use as a full page. So then I used the stamp, let me find it right here. This one, Defined, has, this is an amazing stamp. Yes, it has the B that coordinates with this release, but these pieces can be used again and again and again, and I will be using them again and again. You'll see them several times throughout this album. Um, and so I just, I didn't even put it on a block. I just kind of picked it up with my fingers and dabbed that texture around the background. And you can see how much that changed that paper um, from just that plain floral paper and add a little bit of contrast to it. So uh, I did that. For the doily, I actually used a Coco and Reno die. I don't think it's available any longer. I'll try to find a doily die online for you guys. It just sprayed some cardstock with some cardstock with tumbled glass distress spray to colorize it and then cut it out with that doily die. So it's a great way if you don't have a whole lot of doilies in your stash, making your own doilies, customizing them to your project. And then these are the leftover leaves from that other page. I had just a couple of leftover leaves. And so I kind of filled those in with the die cuts. I actually used every single die cut from the uh, devotional kit, except for one. I was very proud of, very proud of myself. So there is for day five. Day six, here is where I put that um, leftover paste through a stencil. This is a stencil from Tim Holtz. This was unique to Joann's. So if I can find it, it'll be linked down below. It was like a stamp and stencil combination, um, but I liked that honeycomb, honeycomb and kind of distressed look. So I just put a little bit of that through there. I'm trying to leave myself plenty of room to journal 
nice thing about the album is I can always add additional cards if I need to. Um, this is a die from Tim Holtz. Now there is that lattice uh, uh, stamp from By the Well for God. I know a lot of the ladies were stamping it and then going in with a craft knife and like cutting out the little pieces in between. It kind of goes with this here. I didn't have time for that. So I just die cut it from some plain brown cardstock. And then I actually took a distress mini cube and just kind of ran it over the top of this. And it kind of gave me a little bit of a wood texture. Did add a little bit of lace in there, die cuts. Very, very simple. There's that bold Carrie Bradford, um, number stamp again. And then these little bees, I showed these on Instagram. So these are using a coordinating set of stamps and dies from Sizzix and Stampers Anonymous that Tim Holtz did. Um, these dies cut right against the stamp. There is not a whole lot of white area. Um, and so I'll try to save it in a highlight over on Instagram. I show a little tip for how to use these, but um, I made a whole bunch of these, the bee and the wasp, and I just had them sitting on my desk. That way I could just throw them in here as I worked through it. Now to kind of add a little bit of embellishment, I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera, but once I was done with them, I inked them with a, uh, embossing dauber. So it's like a clear sticky ink. And then I embossed them with frosted crystal, which is like a texture matte embossing powder. Um, and then while it was still warm, I dunked some of them into the distress rock candy glitter. And so it just added a little bit of sparkle and texture to them. Um, they have plenty of detail on their own, but I just, I like to have texture, especially when I'm using a lot of paper and stamps and die cuts, there's a lot of paper going on. And so I try to bring in um, texture and something different whenever I can. So I got plenty of room to journal there. Day seven, this was really fun. And this you'll kind of see throughout the rest of the album now. The newest release from Tim Holtz and Sizzix, this is chapter three, just released. I ordered a ton of the dies and they arrived. And so I had to play with them, of course. So these were not shown in the um, What's in My Cart video, um, but he did several new dies. These are just a few of the ones that I used in this album, but there are some additional ones that I will be showing you in next month's um, What's in My Cart video, because they are gonna coordinate perfectly with next month's um, devotional kit. So if you have not ordered the new release yet, definitely go check it out. They are phenomenal. One thing I talk about with dies, I have a lot of questions about dies, whether you wanna get into die cutting, kind of, you know, apprehensive because of the cost for the machine, cost for the dies. These can be a little bit pricey. And one thing that I look at when it comes to dies, I want dies that I'm going to use again and again and again. I don't do a whole lot of like character dies or things like that. I do alphabets, florals, staples that then I can use with pattern papers or stamped papers, sprayed papers, um, and then I can get a lot of use out of. And this new release from Tim Holtz is perfect for that. Um, it's kind of an essentials line. Uh, and so the one that I used here is Collector. Um, I will link his release video down below because there's so much detail about these dies and the makers makes are amazing. And so it comes with this little coin pocket and I actually cut this from fabric. I saw this inspiration from one of the makes in his release. So cut it from the fabric that you can get in the fabric pack. So I actually laid um, two of the fabrics, that blue plaid and then the lemon. I laid them together and then ran it through my die cutting machine with that coin pocket die. Now I probably should only do one fabric at a time and I did multiple passes. I have die cut fabric before um, and for the most part it works. Sometimes you have to go in and snip just a few little threads. Um, doing it with the two layered together didn't quite cut all the way through, but it did leave a very deep impression. So I was able to very easily go in with my scissors and cut around um, the die. And so then I just used my Barely Arts precision glue, uh, glued together, built the pocket. And then this pocket's a little bit deep for these flashcards. Um, so what I did to make it so they could stand up, this again was inspired by one of the makes in the release. I used a Tim Holtz paper clip and I put it all the way through the pocket before I glued it down. And that way it creates a little stopper for those cards so they don't just fall down into the pocket. Yes, you could do this with paper. It does not have to be fabric, but this is an you know inspiration for you guys in a way to use those fabric packs in your um, projects. You could do this in your journaling Bible as well. Um, this will fit in there. And then I just left the bottom flap open um, on that uh, 
paperclip. I used a stamp from the numbered stamp set that came out with the subject to change release on one uh, the little tags that are in here. And I just doubled up the tags um, and then added them onto there. So really, really love how that came out. Uh, they're just super fun. And again, a great way to have something that you can use again and again. Um, this die does come with a piece that will fit in there. He's got all the measurements on his release for curious about measurements. Um, these little ticket dies do coordinate with the ticket stamp from Stampers Anonymous. Um, those do have a coordinating die set as well. But um, if you just have the stamp, these will work with some of the stamps in that um, stamp set. So definitely check out the release. You guys are going to be seeing tons of these for me because they're absolutely amazing. <laughs> Here's another way that I use some fabric. So I just kind of ruffled it. I did attach it to a piece of cardstock, ran it through my um, sewing machine, and then I added just a little bit. And then when I cut it, I saved that little scrap. And you'll see that scrap later on in um, the album. Actually, this might be the other little piece now that I think about it. Maybe not, but... I try to save every tiny little scrap that I can. Um, for the die or for the label stickers, I run them through my typewriter before I take them off the sheet. And so then I just typed out the title. You'll see each page, I try to have the title and a number on there. So again, using that Carrie Bradford stamp on one of the patterned papers. This is up on um, some foam adhesive just because this uh, fabric was a little bit thicker probably add a tab to this. Again, we'll add a word study on the back of there. There's another little scrap of fabric just stapled onto this card before I attached it down. This is one of the verse cards that comes in the devotional kit. And you'll see lots of this floral lemon stamp from By the Will for God, and I don't color it in. I just kind of use it as a fun outline background. And then these splatters. Now I, uh, designed a stamp for By the Will for God. It's been probably a year ago now called Lindsay's Splatters. I'm kind of known for having splatters on everything. And just so you know, I do use my own stamp set. So when I don't want to get super messy, you know, I had moved to my living room by this point. So I'm not wanting to splatter paint all over my living room. Um, I just added some distress paint to my mat, add a little bit of water so it was a little bit more runny, dabbed my Lindsay Splatters stamp in there, and then stamped splatters. And that's how I got that kind of controlled splatter look. So if you're nervous about splatters, that stamp set's a great one um, if it's still available. Day eight. So using the flashcards and die cuts, I did run the flashcard in through my typewriter so I could complete the title for day eight in God's waiting room. Uh, again, using scraps. So I had used a doily on this side and I had a little bit that I cut off and I just added it over here. That way those pages would go together. Another verse card so I can do a uh, word study. And then I did this shaker element. So this was using the quench stamp. Now I know that Taryn has a video over on her YouTube channel. I'll link it down below where she shows how she made hers into a shaker pocket. It's kind of why I didn't do a tips and trick video this month. I didn't have a whole bunch of ingenious ideas for the products this month that she didn't already do in her video. So I'll link that down below. Um, but I did stamp this on some cardstock kind of fussy cut out the outline. And then I used some foam adhesive mounted that to a piece of plain cardstock that I had watercolored, um, have some acetate sandwiched in between there, and then I created this shaker element. I did stamp the little ice cubes on some acetate. Um, in hindsight, I probably would have attached those down so that they're not totally free floating. Um, and then this is using one of the confettis from Felicity Jane and created this little shaker element. So I had created this ahead of time, just had it in my cart. That way I could insert it into here um, once I had a spot for it using numbers, papers, again, pretty formula, pretty standard as I go through this album. Day nine, faith in captivity. This is one thing that didn't quite work how I had planned. So I used the uh, banner stencil that came out with this release and I put some texture paste through it and then I sprinkled embossing glazes. I used peeled paint, fossilized amber and speckled egg and just kind of sprinkled the three different colors on there, let the um, texture paste dry, and then I melted the embossing glazes. And they just kind of made a funky brown color when they all mixed together. So I probably wouldn't do that color combination again, maybe just do one of the colors, um, but it does add some fun texture. I know Taryn does that in her tips and tricks video as well. She has an example of how she did that technique. 
you'll see more of those little bees and wasps that I had pre-made. Just some die cuts, very, very simple. Again, a little scrap of that um, crochet. Actually, this is probably the lace die from Coco and Reno, actually. Um, again, I'll try to find something comparable. The, the crochet die would work as well. This, this one from Tim Holtz. So it's just a slightly different, this is more ornate and detailed than the one from Coco and Reno. Uh, use that stencil from Tim Holtz. This time I just blended some Distress Oxide ink through it. Very, very simple. So the days don't have to be super, super complicated. Day 10. I absolutely love the way that this technique came out. Um, so I have the Blossom stencil from Tim Holtz. And kind of similar to where I did that lemon with texture paste, I wanted a similar look on the edge of this page. And so I put the stencil down, put some texture paste, just plain Rangers uh, white texture paste through it. Um, this one is not a perfect repeating stencil, so I just kind of fudged it down here. And then I let that texture paste air dry. And then once it was dry, I went back and fit the stencil back over the texture paste so it fits just like a puzzle. And then I used the watercolors that come in the devotional kit and a water brush and very little water, more paint than water because I didn't want it to seep under the stencil. I just colored in the texture paste, creating some little flowers and the greenery and just kind of went through here, coloring it all in, did not have to be perfect. And then once it was done, I splattered a little bit of the green and I absolutely love the effect. It's got texture, it's got that watercolor, very, very soft. So just a different way to use your stencils. You don't have to always just blend ink through your stencils. You can do something like this, which I absolutely love how it turned out. Like I mentioned, I am in love with that new release from Tim Holtz. So you're going to see lots of these labels from here on out. This is an amazing uh, die set that he did. And so it has cut lines, but then it also has like crease lines. But the crease lines are are wide. So it creates like a deboss when you cut with it. So you can just cut it plain white. You'll see that later on in my album. But you can also ink up your die. Um, he suggests suggests to use uh, archival inks. That's these ones here. I have the minis. They do have full sizes. There are many archival inks in colors that coordinate with the distress line, like this one's vintage photo. Um, so he does suggest using archival ink, kind of an oil-based ink, but I tried it with the Versamagic chalk inks, and I was able to get it to work. Um, you do want to clean the dye with an alcohol prep first, and then you'll use a brayer to brayer on the ink. He goes into detail in his release video. Again, I'll link that down below. So then when you run it through your die cutting machine, it debosses or like letter presses the color into the die. And so it does have some texture and dimension to it. And it pushed that ink in there. Uh, I've already had questions about using uh, distress oxide inks with this technique. I tried it. I was not able to get a consistent um, impression. So you do want to use archival inks or try it with the chalk inks that were, those are the ones that I got the best um, results with. Um, but there are very many different um, sizes, shapes in here. Uh, I am obsessed with these. These are amazing. So created a die, um, layered the Ruth stamp, which I did have somewhere right here. So here's the Ruth's numbers. You can see those open uh, numbers there. Added that, have plenty of room to journal. One of the verse cards, again, using a flash card as a tab. I'll do a word study on the back there. Mixing the new alpha stamp set that released with this release and the alphabet stickers. Again, giving myself some room to journal. Um, and then this was actually a verse that was on a verse card. And I didn't use a whole lot of the stripe pattern or much of the polka dot pattern. I stuck to mostly the florals and lemons. And so this was on a polka dot card. So I just cut the verse right out of the front of the card and then just used it as an embellishment here. So you don't have to use these cards in their entirety. Same goes for the journaling cards. You can cut them apart. Um, and then again, I created another little label. Um, and then this was a stamp um, from the release that I embossed with some embossing glaze. I used one of the die cuts and just created a little cluster there. Really love the look of this entire album. All right, plain white page, just did some black outline stamping, another tea bag. They did have packs of these individually. So if those are still available, they'll be linked down below. I use mine kind of as a pocket. So I have a flashcard in there. It gives me a little prayer spot or a little, you know, word study, whatever I want to do. Uh, folded over some washi tape just to create a little uh, pull tab there. 
Ruth's numbers on some paper. You can see coordinating with this paper over here. And then this is the die from Paper Rose that I showed in the What's in My Cart video. Super, super fun. Again, when we're talking about dies and investing in dies, Paper Rose are great. They're very, very affordable compared to a lot of the other dies that I've seen. Um, this is an Australian-based uh, company. So for all my Australia watchers, I'm here to support you guys. Uh, I love that you have such beautiful products coming out of your country. These are amazing. The um, little leaf dies that I used as well, the gum leaves, and um, those are from Paper Rose as well. And so this piece here cuts out um, an outline piece and then the inner piece, you can cut this from a different colored paper or you can paint it in. Um, and then it has these layering pieces to create the lemons and then it has some ice cubes in that straw. So I actually added some, um, what are they called? Crystals, the, um, it's clear, clear, oh my goodness. It's, it's like Nouveau Drops. I will link it down below. <laughs> it's like clear Nouveau Drops. Um, but it added like this shininess to the outside of the glass and the ice cubes. I just used some watercolor on the outside. The inside was actually that plain yellow paper um, from the paper pack. And then I just coated it with some white gesso to kind of mute it a little bit. Um, it looks more like a beer. That was not my intention because I did go over the top. So there was like some space in the glass. Um, so it looks more like foam, but it's supposed to be lemonade uh, with some little lemons there fun little piece. Again, I had that already created ahead of time. That way I could just insert it into whatever day I decided to use it on. Uh, another verse card. And then this one, I actually ran the tab using a tab punch through a 3D embossing folder just to add some texture to it. Again, I'll do a, a word study in the back using some more of those new labels from Tim Holtz. And so these I did not add color to, but there's plenty of texture and dimension to them in person. Um, this one I did add some color to. This and is from that and uh, stamp set from By the Well Forgot if it's still available. I used an ampersand and then there's that and in there using the clear stickers, very, very simple. Because I spent more time on this piece, I spent a little less time in some of the other embellishments on this page. Day 12, getting to the end. So here's that plain yellow paper. So to give you an idea, um, so this is the same paper. I just put some white gesso over it to kind of mute it a little bit. So don't be afraid to do that um, with any of your papers. If it's a busy background and you want it a little bit more muted, just add a wash of white um, gesso over the top and that kind of knocks it back a little bit. All right, using those big numbers from Carrie Bradford on some pattern paper. And then this is using the Messy Bees stamp set. So this is a six by eight stamp set. Um, in the release, I mentioned these would be great for like custom um, stationery, envelopes, cards, things like that. I love the kind of sketchy look of this uh, set. So I definitely wanted to use it on here. So I use those little honeycombs. Um, and then over here, I use the flowers and the bees. And I actually embossed these, uh, stamped them with Versafine black ink, and then embossed with clear embossing powder. And then I just really messily um, went in there with some watercolors, that little watercolor card that comes with the devotional kit. Um, and so you could see how you could create your own stationery. Maybe you want to write a little note. I'm going to do some prayer journaling, but super, super cute. And this was a fun discovery. So I didn't realize I've never used watercolors on the papers from By the Well for God. The papers from By the Well for God do have a little bit of a coating on them. So I have mentioned that you want to, if you use VersaFine ink, you want to make sure you dry it super, super well. I have a tendency to try to use Archival or Stazon um, because it has that coating. So I did go in and add a little bit of watercolor from the watercolor swatch card and it was like beating up. And so I was afraid that it wasn't going to work, but it actually added this really amazing texture because it has that coating. So it dried with all these little droplets and texture in there. I didn't do anything special. I just use a, a wet brush, wet the paint, drop the paint in there, and then it just created this really fun uh, texture on that paper. So that was a fun discovery. Uh, this is one of the, so each one of these dies from Tim Holtz comes with these different like labels, or you could use them as pocket cards and things like that. Um, so I use the largest one from uh, Collector and just cut myself my own label to put the title on there. 
the verse card, again, just using a flashcard as a tab. And you can see trying to bring in, because I used a little bit of that gray over here, use the gray paper here. So I'm just trying to kind of keep my colors in mind as I put these together. Not that that's a big deal. The studying is more important, but if you're putting this together, that's kind of how I like to do it. Day 13. So using again those labels from Tim Holtz. This time I inked it, inked the die up with some Versamark clear sticky ink before I ran it through my machine. And then I added some um, speckled egg, I think it's speckled egg, uh, embossing glaze to it. And you can see it wasn't perfect. It's going to be a little messy. You can run it through a second time if you want to. Um, but then it like embossed that glaze into the grooves. Super fun um, way to add the title using up the last little bit of those bees that I had created earlier on, die cuts, just some of the number stickers, washi tape from Felicity Jane, very simple, plenty of room to journal. Um, this day did not have a verse card that coordinated with it. Um, so I took one of the recipe cards. Now this did have a paper clip. I thought I would glue this down after I worked on it, but I just decided to leave that paper clip in there. Um, I will add the tab once I'm done running this through my typewriter, but I'm going to use this to do my verse study. This is one of the recipe journaling cards. Um, so I'll run it through my typewriter, do a little, not verse study, uh, word study on here, and then I can just tuck it down in there. I've got a doily that I cut from that cocoa and Reno die, die cut, a little bit of fabric ruffle on the bottom. I didn't even use my sewing machine for this. I actually kind of created the ruffle, held it with my fingers, and then used a stapler to staple it together and then hit it underneath this die cut. So you don't have to have um, a sewing machine. And again, I'll add this tab uh, once I've run this through my uh, typewriter and then just tuck it, tuck it right in there. Day 14, the final day. So background is one of those pattern papers from the release and then using another one of those new dies. So this is Postal. Um, it has this envelope die. It has a little letter that fits in there, some labels, some really, really great pieces. Um, it does have some postage dies that coordinate with um, a postage stamp set that Tim did a long time ago. So I will link it down below if I can find it. Um, and so just like that coin pocket, I used this die with some fabrics. So I had like a dish towel, like a white dish towel fabric. Um, I layered that with the blue fabric from the release. Again, probably shouldn't have doubled them up, but I did, <laughs> ran it through my die cutting machine. It didn't cut all the way through, but I was able just to take my scissors and kind of follow the guideline. It does also put fold marks in there, so you know right where to fold. Just use a little bit of Barely Arts um, precision glue to put it together, and now I have this super fun little envelope made out of fabric. So again, lots of questions about how to use fabric in your Bible journaling and in these types of projects. This is a way you can die cut fabric. Um, I have a tip Tuesday all about fabric and I go into detail some other ways to um, kind of help you die cut through fabric. So I will link that tip Tuesday down below for you guys. I did go ahead and stitch all the way around um, before I assembled it. And I just love, I love the little bits and pieces. And then again, it has that little piece that fits in there. So I just cut it out of some plain white cardstock and just did a little bit of yellow stamping on there. I believe this is the stamp from the stamp set that comes um, with the devotional kit. So I can do some little prayer journaling or whatever, tuck that in there. Um, there is the, one of the last little bees that I had made. One of the verse card, this had the fabric clippies attached to it. So I, just tucked that behind there. Um, this special delivery is a die set that's in here. It just cuts out the, the rectangle and then it punches out the letters. And then I just layered another piece of paper behind there and just cut around it. So I get this fun little embellishment. And then here is using one of those postal dies and that postage stamp. So I stamped it on one of the pattern papers uh, using some Versamark ink. I think it was tea leaves. And then I went over it with some peeled paint um, distress glaze just to give it a little bit of texture. And then I laid the die over it, ran it through my die cutting machine and created that little custom stamp. So love how that came out. Just really fun. Lots of texture. Obviously having a lot of fun at the very end of the album here. Uh, for this one, I just stamped those um, Carrie Bradford stamps on some plain white cardstock. And then again, using that uh, 
what's it called? Defined stamp from By The Well to add some texture to it, tie it in with this side and then cut those out for day 14. There's the first card, create a little tab out of the flashcards, a little bit of fabric on there. Again, I'll do a word study on the back. And then this page, I again use that defined stamp just to create some messy texture in the background, used up the last of the die cuts. I only have one little lemon left. And then that final B that I had wasp that I had created and then mixing and matching to create the title. And that is it for the album. You guys, this was so much fun to put together. I can't wait to go through um, and journal everything out, put all my notes in here, um, kind of spend some time in here and just really reflect on the devotional content, which is amazing. If you've not picked it up yet, I do believe they have some of the kits available in the shop still. So those will be linked down below. Again, I'll link some of the special things that I mentioned in this video, but if you're looking for a full detailed list of the supplies that I put together for this release, check out that what's in my cart video. I will have that link down below as well. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below for me. Um, if there's you know questions about something I went over too quickly, let me know. Uh, again, I'll have it as much linked down below as I possibly can. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.